All right, what's up? And welcome to the Cymatic Show. We have Leah Culver. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Uh, doing good. I'm excited that we squeeze this in. I know, yeah. I, did, I didn't want to be lazy because this is our last night here. And I was like, let's get one more guest in. One cause, more. Because every time we shoot one of these, I'm always like blown away, you know, how, yeah. how good they turn out. It's so beautiful here. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's amazing. How, how long have you been in L.A.? Um, I think about three and a half years. Is it better than Atlanta? Um, you know, Atlanta's home. You know, nothing's really better than home. Where, I, where'd you grow up near? Um, I was born in like... Uh, on Northside Hospital, so like... That's where I was born. Really? Yeah, that's funny. No, that's why I was asking, because, I mean, we're for all from Kennesaw, so... Yeah, it's it's cool to, like, be out here working with you guys, you know, it's like home. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say LA is better. I'd say it's, like, another home, you know? Ooh. Yeah, no, cool. I've been asking everybody about this, because I didn't know what all the hype was about. And the city's all right, but the connections are just stupid good, you know? Yeah, I mean, everyone's out here really working. Hustling. Know, hustling hard, and I, I can appreciate that. A lot of creative energy, just like Atlanta, you know? So it's like just a different group of creatives. Yeah, it seems like you're getting in the studio a bunch, right? Oh, yeah, I just came from a studio. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, so you want to talk a little bit about, I guess, how you got started with, like, MK Ultra and where you are, like, today with your project, how you shifted it? Sure. It's it's shifted a lot, even in the last, like, few months. Um, I, I mean, I, I fell into DJing and stuff as MK Ultra. I was really drawn to, like, heavy dubstep. Because uh, I liked more metal music mm -hmm. back then. I came from like more bands, and uh, I always saw myself being like a singer and songwriter. That's always what I did play guitar and drums and stuff. And just kind of fell into DJing and then realized like I needed to learn to produce to get out of the city. Yeah. So I started making like dubstep, and uh, years passed, uh, worked on that, went to Icon. I'm still making heavy dubstep, but um, right now I'm more focused on more vocal driven stuff as well as like more like not as heavy yeah i mean it seems like you're getting a ton of features right yeah that's yeah. like super impressed like i remember i was like thinking like you got on the marshmallow song right yeah how did, how did awesome. yeah how did that come to be um i used to you know i just i've known him a long time and, oh cool uh they <clears throat> that we were gonna actually do one of the first marshmallow songs like back in like 2015 and um, then he hit me up to do Fly, and and then we just put it out really quick one day. So. Just said fuck it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> the, those um, vocals are actually from, like, 2015. Oh, you just recorded them a while back, and you just had yeah. them or something? Um, I, I, like, we were working on, like, rewriting it and stuff, and we ended up putting out the one that was from then. So it's kind of interesting to see even myself and my ear how I can hear my voice has changed. Yeah. How how uh how have the collabs been helping? Because you have one with the Virtual Riot. I mean, obviously the Marshmallow collab. Are these collabs like helping you like growth hack? You'd say like and grow a lot. Yeah, I'd say it's like I just love working with um with anybody who's as like uh, not only talented but driven as these people. It's mm -hmm. just really nice to be in a room with them and learn from them and like just watching Valentin like. He's so fast, and, and he, he, what's cool about him is he's not holding any secrets. Like, he wants to teach everyone how to do it. I think that's awesome. It, it's uh, so cool. Well, like, I think it's a really weird thing that some producers and stuff want to hold their secrets. I know. I, I think, think it's so, an too. It's an insecurity yeah. thing. Because, like, even, like, everybody's been coming over, like, certain things I'm asking, I share everything. I'm like, here's everything we're fucking doing. Because yeah. I want to help out as much as possible, you exactly. know? Exactly. And it's not like there's some, like... Like, uh, there's not, like, a limited amount of success that, like, if other people know, you're going to be harmed, you know? That's such, like, right. a, I don't know. It's silly to me. It's a, I think that's a young-minded idea, to just to hold things in. But, I mean, if, I mean, the, the listeners out there can, can like, all kinds of artists, and it's not going to affect whether, you know, if, if they're all about this artist, they won't be about you. So there's... It's it's nice and comforting to think like there's room for everyone. There really is. A hundred percent. We should all help each you other. Just get the mic, like, slightly closer. Yeah, I'm terrified of losing the audio. I'm trying to kiss this thing. Like I said, it's an audio thing. Like later on, it was funny. Paige, uh, Alex, you remember this? Paige was like talking about how she's like, I'll show you how to use this mic. Because I was like, don't tip it over. She was like, like I use mics and all this stuff. All blah, blah. And then during the podcast, she's talking like this the whole time. I'm like, Paige. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Um, so you've been in the DJ game for a long time. Yeah. I remember, what was it? That festival at KSU. Didn't you play there? Oh, yeah. Um... The one that got shut down early. Yes, with, oh man, that magnetic? was with... No, was it Magnetic? It was Magnetic. It was with, like, Adventure Club, and um, that's how, that's the day I met Adventure Club. Oh, really? Yeah, you're, yeah. you're friends with them, right? They're dope, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're another, like, group that's super talented and, like, nice and really wants to, like, help other people, mm -hmm. and they're not holding in any secrets either. They're, like, so talented. 
Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I remember that festival, and I mean, you were you're playing everywhere in Atlanta. Yeah. Do you think that that's helped a lot transition into kind of like taking on your project now and like? For sure. I mean, I think with any new artist, it helped. I, I started in 2011, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you were in that scene at the time. I, I was one of those little goofy kids. Yeah. Coming to <laughs> See, you remember then? There was there were so many shows all the time in Atlanta. It was like such an easy place to kind of almost oversaturate. Like I remember like double booking back then, like playing all week and just really getting my name out there as MK Ultra, mm -hmm. and then uh, then MJ and some other people kind of taught me like, okay, now pull back and create like brand. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, I definitely know what you're and, saying. But to answer your question, yeah, it definitely helped for sure. Plus, like, people like to get attached to a person, you know what I'm saying? Like, MK Ultra versus, like, your name, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's just, like, really important. Yeah, and I think, um, I, I mean, since I was a little kid, it's, it's always been me singing. Like, mm -hmm. whether I was, I mean, it might not have been good, but, like, just, like, if I was sad, I was singing. If I was happy, I was singing. I'm still that way, so mm -hmm. I think what I'm doing right now which is like a little bit of a shift right now is really exciting to me because oh. I feel like um, it's opening a lot more doors. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that you're an advantage because of your vocalist? Because I think there's something about vocalists to me, like producers sometimes, even if you have unique sound, can have a little more trouble standing out versus like singers usually can like pierce through if they're good, you know what I'm saying? So do you think you're an advantage a little bit? Um, I think that singing is the human part of a song. So like that kind of gives an advantage in general, I think, because it's like the part that mm -hmm. people can really attach to is like language. Not that music's not a language because it absolutely is. Um, like the instrumentals and the synths and stuff makes people feel. But I think, yeah, I mean, I can really spell out a message, whatever the message is, and hopefully it's benefiting to the listener at some point, like whether it's like helping them deal with their breakup or like something else that they can't express themselves. Hopefully if they sing the words, maybe they'll be able to feel. Yeah. And that's like, I always say is like one of the best things. Like if somebody attaches, like regardless how good the song is, if they attach it to like that one summer they were dating somebody and they <laughs> listen to it nonstop, it doesn't matter. That song is going to be in their head, like a different, you know, make it like think of hopefully good memories or whatever, mm -hmm. or a vacation. They listen to a certain song, like definitely can, uh, I think go another level when you can connect with people like that. Mm -hmm. How'd you, so how'd you link up with virtual riot? Um, how did that happen? Uh, I think it was all through Disciple. How did I? No. Uh, okay. John 12th Planet. We were, um, I, I've played a ton of shows with him, so he knows me from that. He's an awesome dude, too. Um, he, he introduced me to Valentin at some show, maybe at, a, not Academy, but some, some show in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's, it's really important to me to work with people that are like, really feel like they have good hearts. And like, I, I think the world of, all the people in Disciple and specifically like Valentin and, and John. Super talented. And, oh, are you? Jesus, yeah. like. He's so talented. It's it's crazy and so inspiring and uplifting to be around yeah, him. Yeah, like sound design is crazy, you know. Um, definitely killing it. Um, I was going to say, are you using, do you use Serum? Yeah, I, I mostly use Serum and Omnisphere. I was just thinking about his presets. I'm like, dude, they're so fucking Yeah, nice. I have them. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Omnisphere is easily like one of my, one of my favorites. Yeah, you can get some, like, if you go down into, like, the bottom towards the, like, more glitchy stuff, mm -hmm. you can get some really cool stuff. Yeah, I, um, I like taking off a lot of the sounds, like, a lot of this, the, like, like, for example, all the effects and stuff, like, mm -hmm. remove the reverb, remove this, and then a lot of times it'll turn up to be in a whole new sound, just probably like, cancel stuff out. Yeah. Um, have you played around with, uh, what is that new one, Phase Plant? Wait, um, no, no, I've played with, uh, the Sim Plant one that's, like... Synth, I think there's, Synth, I think there are two that different one's ones. Dope. Have you, with the seed where you like, that looks the really seed. weird. Yeah, that's, yeah. I actually use that for my main, uh, lead in fire ants. I don't know if you've heard that song, but, um, one of the more heavier dubstep songs I just recently put out on, a, a my EP demons, mm -hmm. I, I use synth plant. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's interesting. So, you, so you've done a great job of building connections. Like you're like one of the most like connected people. I see you on all these, oh, uh, features you. and stuff. <laughs> like what's the, what's the secret sauce? Like, what do you think led to a lot of that? I think real okay, I think really important is just being yourself. <laughs> I, I think people should always be kind to others. I mean, we're, not even just being from the South. I'm saying that because I know you're from Atlanta, but mm -hmm. I don't know about your parents, but they raised me to just be like... Southern hospital yeah, hospitality. Yeah, just be nice. Be nice and, and try to just build genuine relationships. Like, 
I usually don't tell people I sing, and if they find out I sing and they want to do a feature, that's cool. But I don't mm-hmm. just throw it out there like, hey, let's let's do a song together. My man that I just met, you know. I Especially just, when you just meet somebody. <laughs> yeah, Isn't it weird so how when you funny. just meet somebody, like, people are asking for so much? I'm like, dude, just go try and, like, yeah. just have a fun conversation, you know? Yeah, we're just, like, people on the planet at the same time. And like, we're just doing things we like to do. If it, and if it just, like, bounces and works, then that's really cool. And I, I don't know. I, I just trust. I just trust in whatever happens, the journey. Yeah. So it's funny that me and a, a buddy of mine used to always say, like, everybody puts people on these pedestals if there's somebody they're looking up to instagram yeah. famous people but like at the end of the day it's just a dude or just some girl it's just Completely. they're just a person you know when you meet them you realize that oh it's just a person you know yeah and i think it helps make people more approachable when you think about it like that and not kind of being starstruck or thinking that you're not good enough to go hit up x person you know yeah and that's super key too like just just what you said exactly like i i, I think all of the friendships that i've made with people that I do look up to even, uh, just treating everyone the same, like kind and like, every, mm-hmm. I mean, everyone is this, you know, yeah. no one's more special than anyone else. Like, I, uh, Especially it sucks that people talk a lot of shit online. Cause oh, you get such a bad, re- like <laughs> there's some people that just talk smack and then like, they think that people don't read it and stuff. I'm like, dude, you're like instantly ruining your name for no reason. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Over some not, like stupid shit. Yeah, I like to, not say a lot that's that negative out there <laughs> there's no culver drama coming out no yeah no that's good no. um so I, I guess what are you up to now i remember you we talked like maybe like was it six seven months ago maybe might have mm-hmm. been a while back you were talking about some projects you were doing with like uh colleges and stuff are you still pursuing that or yeah i um i was working with actually kennesaw i was working with KSU? <laughs> I was working with ksu on building my Leo land stuff um the students and i were working on um augmented reality and we did it, um, and we were going to do it for Imagine potentially this year. I'm not sure. I'm working on that. But um, where you can, like, wear glasses and be in Leo Land, which, if you're not aware, Leo Land is, like, the cartoon stuff we've built and, like... Wait, so can you explain to me? Like, what's the experience like? Uh, like it's, I'm- like, well, uh, initially I just wanted to make comics. I love comics. So uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to make, like, comics that kind of worked in with my branding, like, graphics and tees and stuff. But it turned into, like this whole expansive world where the characters that have specific like names and um, like personalities and stuff are actually moving around around my set. So like, I'd just be like DJ. Wait, wait, but it's not, they're not there. They're not really there. Then how do you see them? With glasses. Oh, you see, you put on (laughs) the glasses. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Is this like a headset or is it like? It's like glasses. Yeah. But what? Uh, I can't remember the beginning of the question you had. I might have jumped. You, yeah, the colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so you're working on that project? A little bit. It's not as forefront as it was. Um, been working on a lot of new music. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of stuff that's maybe not as, like, as nail on the head, like, dubstep. You know what I mean? Or, like, straight up EDM. Like, I'm... Steering away from the rhythm? Yeah. A little. Like, I mean, I can still make that but i i, I want to somewhat get i'm getting a little bored of it so i like want to kind of branch out and uh, if you've seen my sets before you know like i'm really into live instrumentation and like yeah. guitars and drums i'll bring out like um keys and a kids choir like last year and um dancers i want to make a really big show so the stuff i'm making right now is a little more like um, there's certain words I don't like to describe it, so I'm not trying to, maybe just more, um, vocal driven, still has EDM influences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of the acts that are now starting to incorporate like live instrumentation and stuff yeah. and stuff go over the top are kind of like separating themselves, you know, especially if like everybody's playing a similar type of set at a festival yeah. or something, it kind of helps. Like, I think people just live acts are crushing it right now in fusion with the, you know, EDM stuff. I want to produce stuff for pop artists like... Um, like I want to be able to produce something for like Ariana Grande or like Beyonce or like, Ariana Grande. Yo, I literally, yeah. <laughs> yo, she is so inspiring to me. It's insane. Like I've been, um, you know, of course as a vocalist, she's like incredible. I went to, I went to this concert in LA at the, um, not Staples, but was it huge. It was huge. Okay. People talk about selling out those arenas and you'll go and you can see it's not quite sold out, which is fine. Yeah. But she sold out that like show. Like crazy sold out? And like not a seat I left. can't even like fathom that. Like to think that like how many fans you could bring to one spot like that. Uh, it's incredible. Like she's been through so much and that's so inspiring to me. 
like she's been through a lot of the same things I've been through in the last like and it was around the same time period she was going through it so I was like I can really can relate, relate to her. her. Are you yeah. a Billie Eilish fan? Oh, I love Billie Eilish. I just started following her and, and listening to all her music. She's fucking incredible. She's insane, and she's, like, changing the game and, like, paving new ways, and it's so cool. She's so cool. I found every studio a cappella. Like, they just uploaded them all onto mm -hmm. YouTube, and I was like, I'm definitely going to fuck with these. Like, Were instantly. they dry? Or? No, yeah, like, it was studio a cappellas. And oh, I'd like shit. to mess with them for, like, Instagram content or something. But they're yeah. just sitting there. And I'm like, sweet. They put these out. Can you send those to me? Yeah. I think you got to just YouTube it. Okay. Turns out it's like some low-key rip guy and I'm getting in trouble. They're like, Steven's promoting <laughs> some shit. I don't know. Um, no, that's interesting. It's, cra like, it's crazy how easy it's been to get people over here for, like, this podcast session. Yeah. Like, and I think some of the face-to-face, -face, like, networking stuff, like, I, I think that you've bumped into is just, like, so good. Like, being able to play, like, you opened for probably everybody, right, back in the day? Yeah. Like, every big <laughs> artist, like, like, so, so in, the, in the early stages, how, um, how hard do you think it is for a producer to make a full-time gig DJing? Because I think it's a pretty good, pretty like, hard. well, it's a pretty good job, though, if they can do it, you know, yeah. but, like. Do you think it's a viable route for producers to do instead of like their day job is to try and like get gigs doing DJing and, and kind of practice that for later? I think that it's really important to figure out what it is you actually want. Because I, I guess if, if life it is, is as short as it seems like it is, then I think we should put all of our focus into doing the things that we love to do. So, but to answer your question, yeah, I bet it's like, well, it's so oversaturated. I think the important things would be to figure out good, like, marketing and branding, mm -hmm. figure out who your audience is or who, like, your people that you're going to be producing for or, like, if you're an artist producing for yourself, mm -hmm. just figure it out. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's totally possible and doable. I think everyone should try their hardest to do whatever makes them, like, really happy. Because uh -huh. don't you just hate, like, when you talk to someone and they're like, you're like, what do you like to do? I, I never ask people what they do. And they're always like thrown off by it. I'm like, what do you like to do? And they're like, what do I like to do? I don't know. It's like, <laughs> let's put time to that. That's important. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, even I would say stuff like, even if you're trying to do a music career, even outside of music. Yeah. Like, because I think that's super important. Like a lot of producers lock themselves in their bedroom all day mm -hmm. and then start to get depressed. And I'm like, dude, you're sitting in a get room all day in front, of a, in front of a, a computer. You know what I'm saying? Like staring at a screen all day. So I think there's like, like I go out and I try to do like active stuff or like just get, get away from the computer for a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Helps like refresh my brain. I think it's so important to just like go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm totally like, I'll be in my room for like three days and be like, oh my God, I don't feel the same. I need to go out and be with trees. And luckily out here, I mean, in Georgia too, you besides can. Besides the smog. Yeah, the smog besides here the smog. Is a nightmare. It's everybody's cool. No yeah. one's. Everybody's cool. They're like, yeah, it's it's the smog. Like, it I'm is like, what it is. And I'm sitting here like Georgia doesn't have crazy shit like this. Um, if it makes you feel any better, like I I'm someone who's had like asthma, mm -hmm. and I I get asthma in, in Atlanta, and I've been here for like three years, and it hasn't worsened. Oh really? I, I get asthma randomly too. So. Yeah. So I don't know. That how was uh better. how was going to Icon? Icon's amazing. Icon, um, I think anybody at any level of production, like knowledge, can go there and come out with more. Um, whether it be just having a great um, support system of mm -hmm. people, like just sharing a bunch of yeah, samples I mean, build, and things, and yeah. like hopefully not sharing cymatic samples. You guys, not <laughs> buying them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just, buy, buy those guys. Buy those. I'm just messing around. Um, just having a support system and being able to like bounce tracks off of like. Mm -hmm the other kids and like the uh, teachers and stuff. I mean, they, they like if you're dope at production, then like you could go in there and get better at songwriting and mixing and mastering. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not great at sound design, you can go there and get dope at that. It's cool, I think it's cool. They even teach you how to like collaborate with people and not be like a total jerk. Yeah, <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think a lot of benefits came from more of the learning production side or like the people you're meeting there and surrounding yourself with? I think there's um, both. For me, um, a lot of the speakers that came in, I actually already knew them. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's from shows and yeah. all that. But I mean, for for maybe like a producer who hasn't done a lot of DJing or doesn't necessarily get out and meet people that often, yeah, it, it, I would say if you're on campus mm -hmm. versus like doing the online stuff, you can super benefit. Like if you're somebody who likes to meet people, which I encourage. Yeah. Um, so how'd you get your first gig playing? I guess back in the day it'd be MK Ultra before. before it's actually yeah. really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do you remember Wobble Wednesdays? 
I was going to make a joke earlier when you were talking <laughs> about just, I was just going to throw out Wobble Wednesday just because see if you know, but yeah. Yeah, of 100%. course. They're, they're doing another Wobble Wednesday. The quad, Wednesday. remember yeah. the quad way Oh back? my God, the quad. You, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, dirty places, dirty music, yeah, dirty people, happy That happy was like vibes. the first introduction to like <laughs> all of this, you know, like going there and saying like, like, what the hell is this? And I went to one festival, oh, I forget what it was called. Like, I remember I saw Dr. P was like the first person I ever saw. Just go to the show and people are like headbanging. I'm like, this is a world, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was interesting. I wish I knew that festival. I forget what it was. Um, was it uh, Identity? was like one of the earlier ones. Shit, it might have been Identity. They, I, they did a few, Counterpoint. Counterpoint was amazing. Was did dope. you play Counterpoint? I played Counterpoint. You did play Counterpoint. It did you play crazy. at the Silent Disco? I played the Silent Disco and the craziest thing. So I'm a huge Chet Faker fan. Yeah. no. But I, back then I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess he got sick and somehow my manager was talking to one of the people doing the talent buying for the festival. Mm -hmm. I was already playing the Silent Disco and then they, they gave me his slot. And I didn't know how big he was. Jeff Faker's huge. Yeah, I didn't know. And like, I, I messaged him on Facebook. I was like, hey, I just wanted to say I'm sorry that you're feeling sick. And I hope that you feel better soon. And I'll do my best to make this set awesome. And like, I didn't really expect a reply or anything. And I didn't get one. And then like, I, I looked on YouTube and I was like, oh, wow, I love that. I love his music. Like, I've he's, heard he's his stuff. He's incredible, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's made some music with Flume, too. Yeah. Like, back in the day, I, just, I used to always listen to like Flume and Chet Faker. Yeah. He's a really good singer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, did it, so he didn't reply back? No. <laughs> Chet Faker, if you're listening to this, go back and in, into the DMs. Please talk to me. I love you. <laughs> love Leah. This might lead to a collab. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. So I can clip this spot and be like, <laughs> see, you should get your artist on this show, you know? Yeah. But the, the Wobble Wednesday thing happened. I was just like, that was like way back. I was just kind of helping uh, Justin Myers do like, emails and stuff and helping him with booking and mm -hmm. and he was like there's no female djs in atlanta and i was just like really dry and sarcastic and was just like i'm a female dj like you haven't booked me yet and he didn't were you djing at the time <laughs> no oh, <you> were <laughs> i never joking. DJed before and and he booked me for that wednesday and i did it and you just did it well i was living with some djs back then and and my brother's a dj i'm a drummer did you like minimal it stuff was, you were just trying to make no, it through it like or were you trying stuff. to like i mean i was shaking uh, i was shaking balls but it was like it was remember those little hercules controllers this is uh, like i'm not familiar was it, it like was, a little I mean, baby guy yeah it, it looking back it looked really funny oh did that you kill was, it or did you did you fuck up I don't remember. I probably blacked out for the whole thing. <laughs> I was probably so nervous. <laughs> yeah, so now's the time for that question. So what's the craziest tour story slash playing a live show or something that you've bumped into? Let me think. Um, I kind of like wild stories, like stories where somebody's jumping on stage or doing some. Yeah, I, I mean, there's been times where I've, I used to crowd surf a lot, and I say used to because... People yeah. can get pretty handsy, but I was always pretty good about like, I'd wear like double layers. If I planned on going crowd surfing, I'd like, get worried. wear pants. I do. I don't do it now. I can't do it now. Yeah. That shit's crazy. People yeah. are like, I just get scared of being dropped. I've seen so many like fans in the crowd, like decide <laughs> to do it. Like he gets enough courage or something. They put them up and then just pop, you know? Yeah. I've actually like fallen off stage before. Oh really? Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it might've been at, it was at quad. Yeah. That's funny. All these bad <laughs> um, This, uh, I don't know if you remember, well, I won't say names, but this camera guy was like zoomed in on me and then this girl like bumped him and it like really hit, like the camera hit him in the face really hard and he like went down and I didn't think about anything. I just like, I was in like platforms that were like this, like I shouldn't have been running at all. But uh, I went around to like check on him, and I don't know if you remember, you probably don't, but like there's a cutout where there's like all this, like I mean like a six foot drop, and, and then there's space, and then there's a speaker, and then there's uh -huh. a crowd. And I went straight into that boy. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody helped. Yeah, I just sat there for a second, like pondering my life situation, like wow, I'm, I'm sitting in a hole, <laughs> and everyone just saw me fall into it. But, That's funny. Um, crowd surfing and um i can't think of anything like you know crazy crazy like That's nobody funny. did anything son, son holds so cool. a funny story where he was like saying that uh some girl i guess comes up to his like i guess it might have been the green room or it was his tour bus and they were trying to like she was trying to get on and she oh was like God. son looked at me in the crowd like you gotta let me see him and they, they were asking her politely to leave and then they were like, hey, we're going to have to call the police if you don't leave. Like, <laughs> I've had a lot of crazies, yeah. but that, not like um, during my show. <laughs> okay. And then, and then pretty much like 
So that happened. So they had to call the police. She didn't leave. And then apparently, like, the cops arrested her. And then as they're driving away, they look back and she leaps out of the back of the cop car. And she like, did? yeah, they got her, but I'm like, holy shit. Oh you my know? God, the dedication. You, you, sometimes you just gotta like slow clap and be like, wow, like, she really what's going on? wanted that. She made it happen. Do you think it's tough keeping up with like the clubbing lifestyle? Like just having to be a DJ and being surrounded and stuff I would say is maybe not the most optimal for like productivity sometimes, you know, people partying and stuff. Um, I think it's all how you want to live your life really. Like I've, to be really honest with you, I've stayed pretty clear of like a lot of the drugs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of made that decision earlier on that I wasn't going to get too, I wasn't going to fall down it because I've seen yeah. a lot of people do a that. A lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you can always turn something around. So to those people, I'm sure they, they will, but I don't know. I just, I skipped the whole thing. I did, I'm not interested in it. So like, yeah, I just really go play the show and try to meet people and have a good time. But yeah, I, I think the lifestyle in general for anybody in the spotlight can get more like tiring. Yeah. Plus even the flights are pretty intense just yeah. flying around and stuff. You got to keep your immune system up, which is That's half the biggest what I'm thing. saying. Like don't I, do the drugs. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to make it cause we're going. So we, I had an event in Atlanta on Saturday and then we flew here Sunday morning and now we're flying straight to Orlando, then to Miami, Atlanta, and then New York in like a short window. It's I'm not really, used to shit like this. Cause I'm just, you know, computer nerd sitting back working on cymatic stuff, but <laughs> and you like hear the sneezes and the coughs and the baby crying and always somebody farts. It's not a good plane ride if no. Oh my god, that was the last plane ride out. I was like, who the hell is <laughs> it ripping always ass? Happens. And you're you don't, like... and you have no control. <laughs> you can't call somebody out. You're just fucked. You, you can sometimes sense who it is. <laughs> I feel like that's a judgment thing. Because yeah. I thought it was the guy next to me. I'm like, you fucker. And like, he probably thought it was you. It's probably the dude. He behind probably you. did. <laughs> he probably like, did. They think it's you. And then everybody's like, everybody's like looking at each it. other. You motherfuckers. No, that's kind of funny. Um, so how often do you go back to Atlanta? Um, well, my team's out there. Uh-huh. Um, I work with Jan Smith, Mama Jan, um, who, if you don't know, she's incredible. She's a powerhouse. She's like uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, she's in Atlanta. She's like a, she's an artist developer, um, vocal coach, an engineer. Um, she, she helped develop and discover Justin Bieber. She works with like Ariana Grande and like Damn. Sierra and like, the, like Usher, the list goes on forever. That lady is incredible. Um, and then I work with Brian Miller, who was formerly at Epic for marketing. Um, and pretty much my whole team is Atlanta, which is really funny. Cause you know, I like, I came out here. <laughs> I didn't really need to do that. No, and, uh, I, t- I told you, I moved to Buckhead. I didn't need to do that. Yeah. I moved to Buckhead for a little bit, and then I just went back to Kennesaw because I was like, okay, the traffic is getting stupid. Yeah, Buckhead, I prefer East Atlanta, to be honest with you. East Atlanta gets sketchy. If we're, if we're some, talking about it. It gets sketchy in some spots, though. For sure. I mean, anywhere worth being is going to be sketchy at some point. I like, felt sketchy in LA in some points. Oh, dude. Yeah, I ex- first like year I was here, I uh, got caught in a drive-by shooting. Yeah. And what do you mean got caught in it? Like... like like you, I don't know if you can no, see it. No, you got like. No, I swear, I, this isn't probably from a bullet, but this is. I don't know. It hit you there? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't. I think this. I went under a car. Oh, I'm sitting here. You like showed me your hand. I was like, you got shot? Well, no. Like, no, but that that still is terrible. I don't think so. It was like a big indent. My doctor actually thought I might have caught something, but like, well, like I don't a shard think so. or something. Yeah, because it was doing this weird thing. What happened? After, um, long story short. <laughs> uh, we were going to this place called Overpass, which I don't know if you've heard of it. It's like, it was a, like LA doesn't do super after parties like Atlanta does. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of like a, an after party that probably isn't supposed to be happening, but they were doing that for a while and it was my friend's birthday. So we went and we walked up to this uh, club where it used to be. But what we didn't know is on Saturdays, Overpass moves to somewhere else and then it's places this other club or whatever, which is cool. We were down to like go in there. And uh, I walked up and I was like, hey, is this overpass to this girl? And she was like, I don't know, but you don't belong here. And I was like, oh, word, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some girl I, told me that. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't. You're I, right. You know, <laughs> you're right. I think I'm going <laughs> to. That's cool. Uh, so I was just trying to read the situation. And I was like, okay, either way, whatever she's trying to tell me, it's like we maybe we don't want to be here. So I'm trying to get um, some very drunk people to Get up and go. go somewhere else and as quick as anything this car just pulled up and started popping at the place at us uh these these dudes like came out we were in a group of probably like 20 people at you guys at us the dude next to me got shot 
I've actually never talked about this before on like a thing, but like, yeah, it was, it was messed up. Was it targeted at you or was it like? Not at us. I, I think that they were just trying to get somebody, you know, it was like, it was all good vibes. That's what was crazy is like, they, they came out, these people came out from the club and it's like all good vibes. Like my friends, it's their birthday and these, this other girl, it's her birthday. And they were all just dancing in the street, like dabbing hands, shaking new, making new friends and like. And that shit just happened out of nowhere? And it just happened really fast. But, um, and it, you know, what I learned from this is the stuff my dad has taught me is like, don't be in places where there's no exit. Like, don't have your back to entrances. Like, all the things, like, dads tend to tell people. <laughs> yeah. No, that's interesting. I mean, that's that's a pretty crazy story. Like, talk about yeah. life could be short, you know? Some no, random shit. No, I really shit. thought I was going to die there because it, it, was, it was more than a drive-by. It was like, at that point, it was like an active shooter because I, I just kept looking at my watch because we're all just trying to stay calm. And <laughs> this interview just went a whole other way. I'm sorry. No, but, yeah, that was crazy. Um, yeah, if you're ever in a situation like that, you need to, well, first think of get out of there if you can. We couldn't. Um, and cover versus conceal. Like, meaning don't get behind a bush, get behind a car. Oh, damn. Yeah. You, like, know the strategy for this shit. Yeah, luckily that... Um, Wait, so yeah. what happened? Was it going on for a while? Yeah, so I was watching my um, my watch, and it ended up being about 20 minutes. And, I mean, they were still, like, popping rounds. And it just it felt like it was not going to end. And or, or, Was it just somebody just running around, or what was it? Did no, they, they figure were, it out? Well, no. So there's, there's no conclusion to it. I'll never know who they, if that guy lived or who that was or what it was. It was clear that they were out there for somebody. Uh-huh. And it was clear the cops weren't coming, which I've heard that about L.A., but, really? Yeah. I'm not coming. It's, that's just sealed the <laughs> deal. I've asked everybody about scary. LA just so I know if I need to come here, and Leah has sealed the deal. I'm staying in Atlanta. I mean, I, honestly, like, it's just like Atlanta. You know, like, you could be on a good street, and then you walk over another street, oh, you're on yeah, a bad street, that. and it might, maybe it was like that, especially so new to LA. I, I had no idea where I was. Yeah. It's just rule of thumb is know where you're at listen to people when they say you don't belong there and Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know don't stand in um, places you can't exit just be aware of your environment yeah but you know we were okay I hope that guy's okay yeah I'm glad you, you guys made it out that could have been sounds like a disaster wild like that ve- wild. like that like that Vegas event you know what I'm saying like yeah like uh, imagine you're playing a show thousands of people and then that starts to happen you know yeah, what I'm dude. saying like, like people don't even know what to think you That's know? why I can like a little bit relate to that even with Ariana, like the the show she played. Oh, there was something. What was it? What happened again with her? Um, she was playing like a a big arena, and there was a, an attack. Was it like a nail bomb or something crazy? I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah, I do. I do remember hearing about that. That's wild. She's resilient. She's she's someone to look up to. Like someone who's gone through heaviness and and still makes a number one album. And like, because yeah. I mean, grief and like trauma like that that's like so life-changing to be able to go out there and smile and record and perform it's amazing yeah. what uh are you ever afraid of not for these reasons per se but like uh because me and Drew always talk about this like going towards direction keep any more and more in success and at a certain point you're not gonna be able to turn it off per se you know what i'm saying like like there's some people like kevin hart was talking about he can't walk somewhere with people just like boom 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 you know have you ever uh thought about that Absolutely. <laughs> or like the social media thing. Like it takes yeah. a lot. Like, like going on Instagram is hard. For those of you guys out there watching, it's fucking hard making posts every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, people, uh, larger artists like that, they're going to have content calendars and they're not going to be looking at their, their uh, comments as much. Mm-hmm. Like I remember a long time ago, uh, one of the dudes from Chainsmokers is like, never read the comments. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, I like comments because I, I, I talk to people in the. Yeah. I think he just means like at the at a larger scale when people start getting not so nice, it's okay to like definitely happens when you get bigger. Protect your being because you know, like I said earlier, we're all the same and no one's special. Like, I mean, everyone's special is what I mean. You know, mm-hmm. nobody's not special. So, I guess like what matters is just protecting who you are. Just make sure that you're just remaining who you are. And yeah, I've thought about that. Like walking down the street and I think it's just kind of what you sign up for. I mean, there's, there's people that become famous overnight and there's people who maintain it and it's all the same, like, uh, and ending with like, maybe you don't share your private life. Maybe Mm -hmm. you don't trust people right away when you meet them maybe, but 
Yeah. Just keep a good friend circle. I don't know. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Nothing but good vibes here. Yeah. Um, so transition a little bit into production. I want to talk about your vocals. Okay. So um, obviously vocals are, are big, you know, helps, I think, a lot of records out there. Is there anything you're doing for your vocals, specifically like production wise, maybe more on the technical end that you think is like amazing mm -hmm. tricks that um, producers should like do more? I have a few vocal chains that I use, um, but usually when I'm like cutting stuff, I'm usually, because I'm also writing it and singing a lot of times, I'll just make it up into the mic. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times like I'll, I don't know if you guys, you guys should interview Randy, um, who's like one of my favorite vocal engineers. But yeah, I mean, I like Altiverb, uh, which is a really cool um, reverb that actually tracked impulses from different rooms. like. Uh, the Disney Hall, which is here. Mm -hmm. um, it's what else? Like they've they've done all kinds of concert halls and like rooms and studios, like Abbey, and it's it's cool. So I like Altiverb because it's just kind of like a little magic. I don't trick. even know how that that algorithm works per se. Like how they make something sound like from that room. No, because it is. It's the way it works is like they take a signal like a sign or something and they go ooh or like yeah, yeah. like. Uh. They take a whole um, note range and then they can pull like they the reverb from They listen to what the bounce, the bounce off of it or something? Yeah, they'll grab the whole reverb from the room. So it's like actual reverb from that but room. But are they grabbing like how that, like the time it takes for that sound to bounce back or some shit? And well, you can adjust it. So in, in Altiverb, you can actually adjust how uh, uh -huh. the size of the room and like in other reverbs, you can like adjust like what's it, what it's bouncing off of. But yeah. I think specifically for Altiverb, since it actually is the room, they don't probably give you that option. Yeah, it's uh, we're in the middle of like creating plugins and stuff. Sick. And, yeah, and at, fr <laughs> I at first, I wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah, so at first it's kind of like okay, you gotta get developers, but it's not like that. Okay, so first you gotta start with a DSP, somebody who creates the algorithm for the sound itself, who makes it sound like okay, you know, here's it's gonna sound good, and then the developers take that and create a little plugin that you can tweak and stuff. Yeah. But like the tricky part's been the DSP for us, like to find like really. Do you need a guy? Really smart dudes who are like, I need a Steve Duda. Dude, Steve that, Duda. That's is, what I need. I need Steve to clone himself. You and know, he used to work at Icon. He's, he did used yeah, to work at he Icon. He did our graduation speech, which was yeah. like, like shockingly good. <laughs> yeah, I, so good. I used to I used to talk to Steve a lot. I, I haven't talked to him recently, but because um, we sold hella serum presets. Yeah, talk to Steve. He's yeah. gonna know somebody to like. I need, get, with. I need to get Steve on the plug-in plug. Yeah, I need to get Steve himself. That's what yeah. I need. Mean. You know what's crazy about Steve? He's dominating, and he's one dude. Like, beating coding yeah. teams and, like, budget teams, and he's just a dude at his house. It's well, does, does he not have, like, a team? I just know that. He doesn't. It's just Steve? It's just him coding and answering support tickets. I tell him to hire somebody for support tickets because yeah. I get his support tickets a lot because they're like, <laughs> Serum's not working. I'm like... <laughs> Hit up Steve. Have you updated Serum? But like, why are you hitting up Cymatics? <laughs> I answer weird. it all the time, like FL support, Ableton support. So it's kind of silly. That's funny. Yeah. yeah um, I'd say, I mean, that, that was like a, just one thing, reverb, of course. Um, but, you know, just good compression. Um, use Melodyne? Yeah. I usually, I don't have any live auto-tune, at least on my computer. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I love Melodyne. Um, you can really definitely. get your vocals on point. Like, yeah. Like Drew, Drew shows me some of the stuff he does because he's really good at vocal processing and he'll sound incredible. It's not like Drew's like a crazy singer or something, but what he does with his vocals is like, whoa, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's a, one of my friends, there's this band called Orgy. They um, have this singer call, uh, named Jay. Mm -hmm. He taught me this trick with a UAD plugin. Um, it's the uh, EQ P1A. If you stack three of them and like group them, mm -hmm. it just somehow like, just like, um, Click it on and off, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, it almost makes it a little more warm, but it's not a coloring plugin, Wait, really. You're just stacking EQs? Yeah. No, um, stacking um, compressors. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And it just sounds better? Yep. Okay, there's the secret <laughs> hack right there. Um, yeah, it's, it, it was actually the guy from uh, Universal Audio taught him that, so I, mm -hmm. I trust it. Um, and it's, it works. Um, I'm trying to remember what plugin kind of helps get your voice more in the pocket. Maybe I'll um, I'll go back home and look Find at it, it and it up. let you know, and you can put it in whatever link you're doing. But it's it's the sauce. Yeah, no, that's cool. What's uh what's one thing you're doing for your career career right now that's like killing it that you think more producers should do or producers and artists, but they're they're not. Like, what strategy? Let me think about that. Because um, I kind of like to hear everybody's like individual, like everybody's got some secret sauce about like what they like to do. Like for me, it's Instagram swipe up ads. 
craziest thing in the fucking world right now. Not a lot of people use them, you know? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you have a certain thing, whether it's collabing that you think it's kind of vital, it's working for you. I think there's so much that's vital. Like, uh, well, I think, uh, like I, going back to what I said earlier, just like being a nice person, I think really matters. Um, just working at your craft. I mean, those are obvious things, supporting your scene. Um, you know what's funny about the being a nice person thing? I definitely experienced that firsthand, like, because I've just met so many people. And, like, once you're cool, you're mm -hmm. chilling, you're dapping each other up, and it's yeah. just like you're just... And then, and then all of a sudden, every time we're in L.A. now or every future event, it's so much easier. Yeah. Like, when you just got their phone number, you're like, yo. You know? Exactly, because, again, we're all just people. Like, everybody is just out there doing what they want to do, hopefully. Um, but I think, uh, to answer your question, what's something I think more producers or artists or what mm -hmm. people in general i don't remember was it producers? like what's one thing that you're doing that you think other people should do more you just don't see they're not doing it um that's hard to say marshmallow collabs no i'd say <laughs> <laughs> everyone should do a marshmallow collab. um no i think just maybe figure out take the time to figure out what it is you want maybe uh -huh. don't just jump in uh like i mean figure out what you like and what you don't like and and work on that. I think right now what I'm doing is I'm just making so much music um, with the intention to like put an album together mm -hmm. uh, and make so much music that it's like there's like a solid 10. So make like 100 songs and pick 10. Make like 50 songs and pick like five. Yeah. No, you know I, think, I, mean? I think that's very smart. I, I think if, if anything, just like uh, keep going, keep your head up. I know it's, it can get kind of tough and, oh, oh yeah, just don't look at everyone else. I think that's my advice is like, don't focus on what other people are doing. Just totally just do it. I mean, look for inspiration where you find it, but don't compare yourself to anybody else. Cause like, you're like the only one of you. It's so, it's so important that you don't try to be another whomever, you know? Well, especially because like, sometimes we start chasing like they're probably like three years down that path. So you chase them and then a new sound comes and then you go chase that. And it's yeah. like, you're never going to get kind of that deep domain expertise. You know what I'm saying? And if you can make the genre that quick and it's that easy, then it might not have been that it might like be a quick moment in time. Anyways, I talk about tropical house like that. Like tropical house was kind of easy to make. Yeah. Everybody started making the same Kygo sound. And even though Kygo crushed it, like people chasing it just made it kind of die off because everybody just kept making it. You know? Right. It was like, um, like melodic dubstep or what it was just like everything was super sauce for a second well future future bass remember yeah when no, it was 100%. just like it was everything was just like i, I remember bass. that what happened when it was trap remember when trap started taking over like that oh, and of course it was, and it was nothing <laughs> Came out of atlanta that, that's yeah nothing <laughs> you remember? but like heavy trap you know what i was talking about with son it was funny in a podcast that you can definitely relate with uh atl ho because it doesn't matter how chill I did that at my last event when I was on the mic and everybody does it but I love it it's funny and it's just funny how other city like artists probably come to our city and then like play chill music or something and all of a sudden they just hear like ATL ho yeah. you know it's kind of funny yeah LA's got one too it's like the it's not as cool as ATL ho to be honest it's like uh, whatever I don't even know it enough I'm, just, I'm too ATL ho yeah, yeah no, no, that's cool that's cool uh, what's the best person you ever got in the studio with Best person. Yeah, with well, somebody who's like shocked you, like technically or like their their skills and stuff. Um, I'd say that's probably. Let me think. Uh, Julian Slushy is incredible. Valentin's incredible. Um, who's like? I mean, Randy, and what his knowledge is like. Uh, as a vocalist, also like, it. It's so easy to kind of. Okay, so vocal engineers have like a whole nother job than producers. Like mm -hmm. their f art is ser seriously an art because the relationship between the uh, vocalist and the engineer is so important. And it's so easy to kind of throw off a vocalist without meaning to like by like blasting the ears or like m making them feel insecure about their takes or like it. <laughs> it's so fragile. It's like an art form to work yeah, with them. Totally. So I'd say like, never forget your vocal engineers because vocal engineers are going to like really pull your song together. Interesting. So you've been in the studio with Slushy too? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I've, I've written for a lot of people that collabs will never come out. Like I've written for Chainsmokers, um, written for Borgor like three times, a um, bunch of people. Uh, and I've written for Zed with Valentin. I've written for, um, I can't say I'm on a NDA, but I've written for a theme park. Like a theme park. Mm -hmm. 
Six Flags. I'm just kidding. I don't know who it is. I, <laughs> Disney I World. Know. We got you. No, I don't know. Kidding. We don't um, want Disney's lawyers coming after us. They will eat us alive. <laughs> I, I'd say like so many different people have impressed me is my mm -hmm. point, I guess. Like yeah. I'm always so impressed by anybody who is just so uh, hardworking and really puts the hours in to their craft. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really people. incredible when you get into somebody who's like really top level and just watch them work, you know, it's almost like, it's just, it's incredible to see, you know, yeah. it just it, flows out, you know, totally. And uh, even working with other songwriters, you, you always learn no matter what, that's the cool thing about productions. You always get better. There's always new mixing tips that are coming about. Like it doesn't ever stop. Like tips can get stale. So it's kind of like things are always changing. I, Oh, I got to be in um, Dr. Dre's studio one time, and those those engineers and producers are are beast mode. <laughs> They're no, dope. I, I so bet I was, they are. I'm impressed by them. Cool. Hey, Alex, what do we run on time? I lose track of time. This is like a, a vortex when you're We're in the vortex. 45 minutes in. Um, cool. So I guess a couple more things I want to do. One, I'm going to do this like lightning round thing where I ask okay. you questions, and it's kind of like you can give me short, quick answers. Okay. Um, but we do that in a second. First, I want to talk about the shit you have going on and what do you want the Sam Max community to know? Plug, self-plug. Self-plug. Um, well, I think at one point were we talking about doing a vocal pack? Yeah, I would think yeah, that'd be Yeah, I kind of just remembered that. Um, maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Sam oh. community, maybe we will do a vocal pack. So you know what's one of the cool parts about the way we do free downloads and stuff now? Huh. Uh, putting it through Instagram gates. So this okay. little thing, like you remember SoundCloud gates back in the day? So you put up your song for free download. Oh yeah, then you, then you gotta okay. go through like yeah, they were good for like a quick hot minute. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, then yeah. all of a sudden, well, first off, if you follow somebody on SoundCloud, people don't scroll their news feeds on SoundCloud anyway. So it's kind of like yeah, not that good, you know. Uh, but the crazy part is, is that Instagram, when you have a follower, it people see the shit. Like the engagement rate compared to like your Facebook fan page, like the death of all Facebook fan pages, like that sucked, right? But we've been putting out free downloads through um, an Instagram gate. And essentially, uh, the first step, we just collect their email. And the second step, it's like, must be following Leah Culver, Stephen, and Drew. So you put uh -huh. out something yeah. for like that. Followers are skyrocket. Oh, for sure. It's yeah, fucking amazing. Yeah. So then we send to our email list of like a million people and then we, you know, post on all our socials, but we can just jack people's like, like we have a workshop with yeah. Kyle coming up. That's going to be awesome. It's free, but that's just going to be the rules you got to follow. Yeah. And it's fair. You know, you yeah. get some stuff you want and then like just follow the artist. Yeah. But right now it's like so good for us. Like running those Instagram gates. I got to show you some of this stuff. Like we're doing a lot of cool stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. I'd like to. Yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, all right. We, we got the plug and, um, um I guess like just. You said to mention like what we're working on is just like yeah. an album. Cool album yeah. coming out. We'll we we'll, we can link that up too when it comes out cool. for sure. Um, so before we go into the lightning round, I guess we're gonna do a quick giveaway, and then the rest of it Yay. is audio only. So essentially, it's on Spotify, okay. SoundCloud, and it drives people from YouTube over. Okay. Tight. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah, guys. So we're doing five one hundred dollar uh, Cymax gift cards, and all you gotta do is comment your favorite part of this podcast, and then timestamps always help us. So whether you like the crazy story she told about almost getting shot, <laughs> uh, the vocal tips, collaboration, drive by shooting, is it vocal tips? It's probably drive by <laughs> shooting because that was crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I was even like. <gasps> When, yeah. I, when I heard it, but um, yeah, one of those things, whatever it may be, just comment your favorite part, and the audio portion starts 